أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين أبا القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن أعدائهم أجمعين In the previous few nights we have been talking about fasting and what fasting should be. So we said it's a, a process of controlling our senses, controlling our body, controlling our heart, our mind, and our actions. If we, if we do this correctly, then we can get the title of those who are fasting or uh, I mean. Until then, if we, don't do, if we don't do so, then we have a problem. And we did mention that there are ten things or nine things one should avoid from the dawn of the morning prayer or the dawn of the morning, twilight of the morning, until the afternoon sunset. This is what we call the Asawm al-Fiqhi, that if you do so, uh, according to the Islamic laws, you consider it to be a fasting person, which we spoke about before as well. So there's no need to repeat. Today I want to talk about the adequates of fasting. Everything in life has an adequate, has laws and conditions to perfect that action. So sometimes, for example, to make this easier, you set up your room, you have your bedroom, you have your TV, you have your computer desk, and you have a very nice room. But then you add extra stuff to make the, the room look more beautiful, prettier. For example, you put a picture on the wall, you put an air freshener, you put a mirror, you put a beautiful carpet, and so on and so on, just to beautify that room. When it comes to fasting, as an action itself, if it's done correctly, then that's good and well. Then there are other things that the one who is fasting needs to observe to make that fasting more complete, or I should say more beautiful. So there are adequates that we need to observe during fasting. I'll go through them quickly. Through the month of Ramadan, this is the month of the Quran, the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed his book to us. This is the month where Allah sent down the Quran to the human beings to be a guide to them. So everything has a time, and the time of the Quran is this month. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he quoted, he said, everything has a season. And the season of the Quran is the month of Ramadan. So if you want to get the maximum benefits out of the Quran, then the month of Ramadan is the month to recite. And even in a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, reading one ayah of the Qur'an is equal to reading the entire Qur'an. So the more you read in this month, the more beautiful that month will become. The more beautiful and complete your fasting will become. So one of the adequates of this month of Ramadan is to recite the Qur'an as much as you can. So if you can recite one chapter a day, by the end of the month, you would have completed the entire Qur'an, which is a beautiful thing to do. So that's number one. Two, this is also the month of dua, the month of supplication, the month of praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We as a human beings, we are very needy creatures. We always need things. You know, in our day life, I need this and I need that, and it, it never ends, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate provider. He's the sustainer, the provider of everything and everyone. So there are times, for example, when you come and you ask your mom or your dad for money, and your father or your mother says, no, I'm not going to give it to you. And then you know there are times where your mom and your dad, they are soft. You know, there's a, they become nice and easygoing and they're happy and joyous. So if you say, dad, can I have 10 bucks? And your father will give it to you. Why? Because he's in the right mood. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm going to give you a 30-day period where whatever you need, whatever you ask me, I will give it to you, I will grant it to you. Of course, giving that it is the right thing, it's not a haram thing, you can't ask Allah for something haram. So as long as it's lawful, as long as it's good for you, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will give it to you. So if you want the perfect time to ask Allah for things, then the month of Ramadan, 
is the month to be in. Or this is the month to ask Allah forever for whatever you do. Also, number three, among the adequates of the month of Ramadan, because, you know, depending on your body, whether you're a skinny person or you're a fat person or you're someone somewhere in between and depends on how you know have you eaten or not eaten in like suhoor before the morning so during the day you might get hungry you might get thirsty you might get tired so naturally we start whinging and we start nagging i'm tired i'm this i'm that i wish i could do this i wish i could do that this is defeats the purpose of fasting because fasting is an action where we need to endure where we need to have more patience where we need to carry on the burden and the pain and keep it to ourselves not to go around and just say oh i'm this i'm that no no that's not required because it is like as, as much as it is a war with us and the shaitan this is a war with us and our body i'm trying to control my senses so if i start whinging all the time and i'm complaining all the time then i'm not doing much so the idea of fasting is what that we endure the pain for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that's also recommended. Among the adequates of the month of Ramadan and any other days if a person fasts, he is needed to keep that to himself that he's fasting. Because sometimes you you know a person comes and says, Oh, I'm fasting, or oh, I'm fasting this, I can't do this because I'm fasting, I shouldn't do this because I'm fasting. They always mention the fact that they are fasting. As if they doing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a favor. You know, you know what? I'm fasting for you. What else do you want from me? You know, right? We shouldn't put it in this way where we're always reminding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or those around us that we are fasting as if we are doing Allah a favor. That we should not do. So hide the fact that you are fasting. Keep it to yourself. You don't need to mention it. All right? Number five. It's recommended for a person who is fasting to put perfume and have perfume and smell nice because during the fasting period a person might, you know, um, things happen in his body and fat melts and stuff like that. So sometimes the mouth might have a bit of odor to it, especially if a person does not take care of his hygiene and his mouth and does not brush. So to have a bit of perfume, just to have that smell, that nice smell that makes people comfortable around you, right? And especially for the ladies, make sure you don't put perfume and go outside. That's a, a no-go zone. That's a, a haram altogether. Inside the house, or for men, have perfume, smell nice, which is a good adequate of those who are fasting. The Prophet ﷺ says, perfume is the gift of a faster. So if you, have a, you want to get, have a gift, then put perfume on. Number six, feeding people in the month of Ramadan. This is one of the recommendations that a person needs to do. And I spoke about this in the first few nights, maybe in Arabic, not in English, but we said, because we live in a country where pretty much we don't have needy people, we don't have homeless people living in the streets or people who are hungry that we need to feed. But it's good to keep yourself or put yourself in the habit of taking charity or what we call sadaqah and putting it in a box. Like for example, take two dollars a day and put it in a box by the end of the month, give it to the masjid or give it to those who donate that money to those who are in need. You need to practice that fact or that act of giving to others. So every day before iftar or during iftar, put two dollars in the box as a sadaqah that it will go to others with the intention or niyyah of trying to feed those who are in need. And number seven, and the last one, is if you come to break your fast, because sometimes it becomes a battle, should I eat before I pray or pray before I eat? Which one is more recommended? Which one will perfect my fasting? And the Prophet ﷺ and the Ahlul Bayt, they always say, make sure you pray, then eat. If you pray and eat, your reward of fasting will be much more. And your reward, your reward of your salah, your prayer will be also a lot. So what do you do is, if it's Adhan time, brush your teeth, uh, eat a bit of dates, two or three days, not too much. Uh, drink a bit of water and then go pray, right? Go pray, finish your prayer and not to run, not just to raise so you can get to the meal. No, take your time, pray comfortably. Once you finish, you go eat and you eat comfortably. Because sometimes if you eat before you pray, your, your mind always makes you feel guilty. Oh, I should have prayed first. Oh, I should do this first. And then once you eat, you're too heavy, you, you're plotted and your stomach is full and you can't even be bothered going, getting up to pray. So always pray before you eat. This is the last one. 
when it comes to things we are not recommended to do, there are things we should avoid doing while we're fasting, right? So I'll mention a few. Once or when a person is fasting, the first, especially if you know, a lot of people don't practice the act of fasting throughout the year. So a lot of people don't fast, they only fast during the month of Ramadan. So what happens is for those who don't know how it feels to be fasting, when they start fasting the month of Ramadan, the number one problem they face is anger, right? So they're hungry, they have a headache, they feel fatigued, they feel tired, so they're very ticky. Once a person says something to them, they blow up. Don't talk to me, I'm fasting. Uh, you know, the mother starts arguing, and the father starts arguing, the kids start killing each other. What was the point of fasting? So what you need to do is, you need to control your anger, right? So you need to avoid disputes, arguments, and swearing, right? That something needs to be controlled. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose of fasting. So keep your anger to minimum. And you do that by not arguing and not having disputes with your siblings, with your friends, or with your parents. That's one. Two, it's not recommended for people to come and read poetry. You know, because unless it is for the love of the Ahl Bayh, salam Allah alayhim, then it is okay. But if it's just, you know, love poetry and what have you, that's just not recommended to be done in this month. So one needs to stay away from that. But brushing your teeth while you're fasting, while the, brush, uh, the toothbrush itself is wet. So sometimes people, they go to the tap, they wet the brush and they start brushing the teeth even during the day. That's something you should not do because if, if you do swallow that wetness from that brush, that could break your fast. So that's not something not recommended. Keep brushes away from you during the day when you are fasting. Also, rinsing your mouth. A lot of people, they just, they just go and they just rinse their mouth for no reason. It, if, unless you're doing wudu, because during wudu is mustahab, it's recommended to brush or to um, uh, go and put water in your mouth and clean your mouth, then yes. If it's any other time, you should not do, though, do so. You should not rinse your mouth because if you swallow it by accident, that could also break your fast. So you need to stay away from that. Giving blood. Uh, during the month of Ramadan, one might be generous and he says, you know what, I'm just going to go donate to the Red Cross. You shouldn't, you shouldn't do that because that will make you feel weak. That will weaken your body and weaken you from fasting. So that you should not do. All right? Uh, inhaling or smelling flowers, that's not recommended. So we said it's recommended to put perfume. But to go around smelling flowers, that is not recommended. Also, it depends because we're in winter, so we don't do this. But sometimes when the weather is hot, we wet our clothes and we wear them just to keep our bodies uh, cold, cold or cool, this is also not a recommended act to do. And lastly, I would end with this, um, having a full stomach. You know, when it comes to eating, you eat so much that your stomach becomes full. That's something that we should not do. It's not recommended because that will prevent us from communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A few things I'll mention quickly and then inshallah we end. So we understood that we need to fast. We understood that the recommendations of fasting and things which are not recommended. Now, what are the benefits of fasting? So I'm going to go through them quickly. Why are we fasting? What do we get? Well, first of all, when this is something that everyone gets when you fast, the physical, the physical um, benefits of it, right? So uh, those who fast, they become a lot healthier. And you see this is practice being done not only by Muslims, but by a lot of people. They fast for the sake of their health. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, fast and you'll be healthy, right? So one of the benefits that we get, regardless of whether we like it or not, our bodies become a lot healthier once we are fasting. Number two benefit we get from fasting is that we get, sometimes we get to feel how others feel, right? So a person wrote a letter to Imam Hassan Askari and he said to him, for what reason did Allah make fasting compulsory? Why did Allah make it compulsory? And the Imam Salam Allah he replied, he says, God had made fasting compulsory so that the rich should find the pain of hunger so that they have mercy upon the poor. So when you are fasting and you feel hungry, you should think and contemplate about those who are less fortunate than you, those who don't have food, those who don't have water, those who don't have even a house to live in. So a lot of people, millions of people around the world, 
They don't have what we have. So through the process of hunger, we get to heal. So the month of Ramadan gives us that opportunity to have that social equilibrium, that social equity between, uh, between us and others. So we need to feel more. And also there are many social, social benefits to the month of Ramadan. It brings people together. It makes people happier together. And even in some countries, it reduces the crime rate. A lot of countries, the crime rate goes a lot lower during the month of Ramadan. So there are a lot of benefits. And lastly, the main benefit that we get from the month of Ramadan or from fasting is that our spirituality our souls elevate themselves. So like I've said this in the last few nights, the more, the less you eat, the more your spirit will elevate, right? The only thing that holds down our spirits, that hold down our beliefs, that hold down our souls, is the fact that we are too attached to the dunya, too attached to the material world. So we eat too much, we sleep too much, we relax too much, therefore our souls, they go nowhere, they just remain. So once we stop eating, once we deprive ourselves from eating and drinking and food and all the things that make us happy, then our souls are more lighter. They are easier to fly and to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ultimately, this is the goal of fasting. Now there are other benefits to fasting. I'll quickly go through them. Fasting is one of the things that teaches us how to be punctual, to be always on time. So you always have a time to stop fasting and there's a time you have to start eating precise on the dot. You can't say, well, maybe five minutes and ten minutes and then I'll stop. No. This, it teaches you how to be punctual, always on time. You cannot eat, you cannot drink at that time. At that time you can drink. So this is one of the benefits that we get to learn. Also we get to learn to, have be, to be patient, right? So I'm hungry, I'm seeing food, I'm seeing things, and I can eat. No one is holding me. Huh? Let's, let's say there's no one watching. I can eat, I can do everything, but then I don't. Why? Because I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. So that teaches me one. It teaches me how to be a person who is patient. Patient. So it teaches us patience. And lastly, we get to learn to be content. We get to, be, we get to learn to be happy. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides, and whatever He wants, we do it. And we are not complaining at all. So this is a state of contentment that we also get out of, out of the month of Ramadan and out of fasting. Inshallah, we will continue tomorrow. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة على محمد وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين